Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about getting paid. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, are software engineers paid in proportion to their pro productivity? Nope, they are not. They are paid in proportion to their perceived value, usually, which is uh, incidentally the case for most uh, business and uh, like all, almost all roles uh, in many cases. Uh, the salaries of uh, software developers and a lot of people is based more on merit than on actual output, if that makes sense. It's actually uh, the norm. Uh, it's not always the case, but it is the norm. Uh, so an example would be, you could be the best junior in your company, like produce more than anybody else. And you could have a senior that is basically incompetent, and that senior is most likely still going to out-earn you because they have seniority, because the val their perceived value is higher than yours. And unless you have people in the... Uh, like who control your salary, who have the ability to actually evaluate the value and your productivity and so forth, you're not going to be paid any more or any less. The best software developers are paid almost as much as the, the worst ones uh, in a company where they don't understand the differences between them, because the role of in of itself, it's uh, you, if the, I, I hope that that makes sense to you, the, the the pay is usually not based on you know the top-notch performer in a certain category. It is always based on the bottom. So what I what that basically means is that if you are considered a junior or a mid-level or a senior from whatever arbitrary way they are measuring that, they are going to put you in the same bucket. Even if you are the top performer in that bucket you're still going to get compensated in, very sim in a very similar manner to the one who is in the bottom that is still in the bucket so it's sort of a minimum requirement type of deal as opposed to that you're going to be able to make even more because you're so much better within that category uh, a classic one, uh, to, to get, this may sound a little bit fluffy but l l let's take an example now so uh, I'll take it closer to home because it might be easier for me to to express it in a good way. So I worked with a company where I had a, the title, like I was considered a software developer, like a senior, let's just use the term senior, right? As a senior software developer. And I was put in a situation where I led the team in terms of like the team that I was working for. I led it, uh, I managed more, let's just say that I had more than one job. I led that team plus another one and I had a uh, responsibility towards the product development where basically most, cons almost every conversation you can imagine in the company happened with me involved or me consulted in some way. I was way like involved in most things that were going on right. And then there's a, uh, a software developer who joins, a consultant. He has exactly the same amount of years on his CV as I do. And he is uh, only hired. And his only job is to code. Which, you know, he could code and like it's not like he couldn't produce results or anything like that. But let's just say that he often struggled with solving problems that I could solve on top of all the other stuff but he's a consultant and he's a senior on paper which means that he earns more than me I do in this specific company he's earning more because uh, I was employed and like he was a consultant but his pay was higher fairly significantly higher and the reason behind it is because the company needed a senior software developer in the senior software developer's role or like that category of person is paid a certain amount and then he had uh, has other things that raises the price because being cons a consultant usually earns you a little bit more etc etc so his salary was higher than mine even though from all objective perspectives I was responsible for more it I, I mean I still had to do all the coding as well on top of the things I mean it's not like I could just ignore it so in terms of productivity and value to the company you could make an argument that I should have been paid more due to my productivity in comparison to what he was producing but 
that doesn't mean that like in this case I was lucky because in some companies they don't even know that you are very productive for example you could be work guys you could be working in a company where you are like like bleeding for the company you're doing everything and they don't notice they don't care because they're not they're not able to see as I said it's about perceived value there guys there are people who are being paid to do literally nothing and they are being paid millions millions and millions and millions because they have the right brand the right CV or like they're very charismatic etc etc they pay, they're being paid by people who don't like because I mean guys you don't really have to be a useful person to get paid a lot of money you just have to find some smuck, schmuck somewhere who's gonna give you a bunch of money for doing absolutely nothing or almost nothing that's uh, that's the truth of it and in my little story here that might seem like an unfair situation but I mean let's not forget guys I could have been a consultant I could have gone and done the consulting gig but the story ends in a very nice way which is that at least I think so which is that in my specific situation my manager actually knew, noticed the work that I was putting in and I got promoted to a level where I actually like I um, uh, let, let's just say that they bumped my salary very very quickly because they did notice that I was doing a lot of good work so although they couldn't just give me arbitrarily more money because as I said in depending on the system a software developer has a range of what they can earn but you can you do other things you can invent new titles that earns you a higher pay bracket etc etc and that's exactly what they did because my manager actually appreciated the extra work I was putting in and saw it and saw me and saw me trying to contribute and I got rewarded for it. I got promoted, more responsibilities, etc., etc. Became a more high valuable person. And so, if uh, for those of you who think about like if things in only as in terms of okay, money, salary, etc., etc., what do you think happens now? Which is the thing that I've said to people before. If you only think about the the, like the, 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 the role as a software developer as your end goal and being paid as much as mom, mom, um, the mom, highest amount of money uh, possible for that specific role you are losing out on a long t longer term perspective so now my title went from being a software developer to being I think it's like a staff engineer like architect uh, type of uh, type of deal right this is something that this other guy that I'm working with he has nothing like that on his CV Whereas I now on my CV have the well uh, not right now but like basically that's what, uh, if I decide to update it I can actually put the actual real experience within one of the largest companies in the world as the highest technical expert that they have in terms of like what I'm doing for the company on a CV. What do you think the, if you if and you can go and look at this? What do you think a uh, enterprise level system architect for a com like a, with a prestigious brand earns as a consultant let's just say that it's a whole heap lot more than what a, so a front end software developer earns and that's why I like to tell people you can't only consider your career as like the end goal being get paid to be a software developer as much as humanly possible think about the portfolio like the experience the CV that you are building and try to become more than that one like that that one single dimension role that as I said there is a very finite amount of uh, pay you can get even if you are the best front-end developer who's ever lived they will not pay you the same sort of salary they're going to pay someone who has a responsibility at the level that uh, I find myself at uh, these days. Uh, I promise you that. So what I want you to take away from this is that uh, no, on average, I would say that uh, the engineers are not being compensated per se due to proport like in proportion to their productivity. It can happen. You can get bonuses and so forth and so forth. But on average, it is really a role. It's sort of like, as I said, if they consider you to be a unit of something like a junior a senior a mid-level or whatever you're usually paid in a range because it's like no company's gonna you know for example have a junior that is so good that their salary actually ends up being the same as like a almost a senior level 
even if they are quote unquote so productive that their starting salary becomes like higher and higher it's not it's usually not going to happen you're usually put in a pay bracket and you can absolutely be productive there and affect it a little bit but it's not going to be like enormous amounts the thing that usually happens as i said is that you're being hired based on the minimum requirement and then you get paid depending on factors that are like well, let's not go through all of it but an example would be if you're a consultant versus a full-time hire etc etc but as i said guys you don't have to think so much about that being productive and doing a really good job and expanding your understanding and expertise within the field can still give you compensation that is a lot higher than if you're just focusing on this single dimension the type of thing that I was talking about because once you get to be a little bit older a little bit more experienced I promise you and I've said this before guys the quality of the work that you do and the quality of your 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 education that you get yourself and the roles that you take on the responsibilities and so forth they out earn every single possible thing you can do at the lower levels that's why i tell juniors especially that it's more important for you to get the right job as opposed to getting like a few hundred bucks or whatever extra for the work that you're doing in a shitty company because i can promise you by the time you're at like 10 years of experience if you've only been doing that thing you're going to struggle to basically find any type of employment whereas people that take on an increasing amount of responsibility and have more impact as i was saying in my little story i have more impact that gives me other benefits and when you get the titles and you can actually put on your CV and you have experiences at the sort of level that you get to when you do have more impact you're going to have uh, let's just say that you can double the salary of every software every, uh, of a software developer if you wanted to if you wanted to really stretch it that's the sort of pay difference we're talking about it's the difference between being the person who sits in one of the desks at the at the gigantic corporation that you're at when you're a little bit older versus being the guy who's in all the boardrooms and actually basically running the entire company trust me the compensation levels for these people is a lot higher and you do not get there without having that experience you can code for the rest of your life and you may not ever get to that level of uh, of uh, of role because it's not a role that you can educate yourself so you can't go to school and just get that job it's something you have to earn through proving through having experience it's as i said to other people it's similar to trying to apply to become a CTO or a CEO or something like that. It's not something that people are just going to hand to you. You have to have a history of roles and experiences that makes you viable for that sort of role to begin with. It's something you grow into, if that makes sense. And that is where usually you start to see the overachievers or the people who really push it. That's when they start getting compensation. But as I said, you also have to be in a company where they see that you can do all of these sorts of things because in the wrong company, you can be an overachiever and like be like the sort of person who should really be promoted to like a higher level and so forth. And in the, it still may not matter. I can tell you myself that uh, I did that transition. I worked for a company for years, did the same sort of deal in like this tiny little startup. Didn't matter for shit didn't get anything for it switched to a, a, another c company and now I basically let's just say that I'm a responsible for more people than my manager at my last job and it took just a few months in another company so it really is not just about how well you try to do it's also about where are you and where like, are you being seen by the right people have a great day